All right, everybody, I'm here today with uh, Brad Orlando. Uh, he's the former head coach at McDowell High School. How you doing today, Brad? I'm doing great, how about you? Great, great. Thanks for being here, Brad. We appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So why don't you tell me about, uh, tell us about where you grew up, what city, what state, a little bit about the neighborhood where you grew up at. Yeah, well, before I do that, well, we've known each other a long time. Um, I think I speak for a lot of people, just wanna say thanks for doing this, it's awesome. What you're doing for coverage of you know former athletes and coaches in the area, it seems like a lot of people really love it and uh, got eyes on what you're doing. And obviously, you're not getting paid a lot of money to do this. It's volunteer work, so a lot of real people really appreciate it. Um, really cool stuff. But I grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania. I grew up in the city. Um, my favorite sport, just like a lot of kids, was the the one that I was playing that that season. Right. Um, you know, I grew up wrestling. I'm fortunate that my dad was my wrestling coach. Uh -huh. um, Played football, baseball, basketball. Got into basketball after um, after wrestling. I actually, won states in wrestling, and then started playing basketball. Wow. Like, what are you that. doing? Um, you know, I used to play hoops at, at Roosevelt uh -huh. um, when they had the outdoor courts with a lot of older guys, and played over at Burton and Spoons courts and the Y, and it just kind of grew me up a little bit because I was playing with some guys who were a lot older and bigger than I was. Right. Um, you know, played baseball. Obviously, played football. I went to Bless the Sacrament. Um, for grade school, so we went there from kindergarten through eighth grade, and then you know that transition into high school and college. Okay, great. So, a um, little bit about your family. Did you grow up with both parents, siblings? Yeah, I grew up with both parents. Uh, like I said, my dad was my wrestling coach. Both my mom and my dad um, pretty much been in every sporting event I ever did. They still to this day, um, you know, everything I've done in coaching. Got two older brothers. Um, those guys were you know guys I looked up to when I was. Younger, just a little shit. Right. Playing sports, trying to emulate things that they did. Right. Um, Quentin Orlando was already featured. Um, I think you featured him. He was a football player, strong Vincent. Played yeah. other sports, really good in wrestling. Ended up playing football at Allegheny. Uh, Matt Orlando was my older brother, oldest brother. Uh, really good baseball player. Played mm -hmm. with strong Vincent. Um, ended up playing at Gannon. Uh, he coached baseball for 30 years, actually. Oh, never knew that. Uh, I think this is his second spring off. So. Long-time coach, uh, he works in the Erie School District, mm -hmm. Quint uh, works at UPMC right now. So two older brothers, still very close with those guys. Great, great, great stuff. So uh, let's talk about your high school career, because you already talked about your about your youth stuff a little bit. Um, where did you go to high school at? Went to Strong Vincent. Uh, went, my older brothers went there. Um, a lot of my family went there, getting into my parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles. So we all went to Strong Vincent. Uh, played football, basketball, and baseball as a freshman. Um, was a lot. I was playing varsity as a freshman in those three sports, and I remember after that spring, it was I was just burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was just a lot being a young kid playing against all these older guys. And, right. Uh, tough decision on which one I, I wanted to let go because I loved them all. I ended up playing uh, football and basketball my sophomore, junior, and senior year. Mm -hmm. um, the spring of my junior year, we ended up moving out to Mill Creek, and that's when I transferred to McDowell. Okay. Um, so I ended up playing for Coach Buffalino at Strong Vincent. Um, Coach Cashone, I'm sure we'll talk about here in a little bit, it's already on. He was one of my coaches, and then, uh, when I got to McDowell, uh, Ron Ruther was my head coach, and we had a pretty good run there going to the Western Finals. Right. What's your memories of Strong Vincent? Uh, they were great. I mean, those are those are the guys that I still hang out with today, and the guys that are uh, out of town. Uh, those are the guys I still talk to to this day. Um, there's a bunch of them. I didn't want to start naming names, but just a bunch of guys that I played right. with. Um, just, just great memories. That's that was my childhood. Those guys were friends at Strong Vincent, and even going back to when we were in like fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Mike Myotis and Tony Grack and Andy Tamlin, and then my brother's friends. Of course, I would hang around with them, even though they probably didn't want me to. I was a little <laughs> guy trying to get around with them, but uh, just great memories uh, of high school. There, there's nothing like it. Um, I played with a guy in college who. He always said he ran out of a tunnel with 110,000 people, and we always mm -hmm. talked. There's nothing like high school football. Right, right. Um, high school football is just is, is the best to me. Right. When you hear the name Buffalino, what does that what does that mean? Uh, well, one, he was a he was a great coach. Obviously, brought the, the first state championship to, to Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, an intense individual, uh, very competitive, and he he got the best out of us. Um, as hard as he was on us. We know what he was getting at. We knew that he wanted us to be great. He wanted our team to be great, and he got us to perform. And we, he had some great years at Strong Vincent. Mm -hmm. So you moved to McDowell. You, you played for some great teams out of McDowell, Coach Ruler. Talk about your time out of McDowell. 
Yeah, so the transition was tough because I'm leaving um, you know, all my buddies, all my guys that I grew up with and didn't really know many, many people out there. Um, Coach Rudler was, was great and he welcomed me in. Coach John Cachon uh, actually came out and was our defensive coordinator. Uh -huh. Uh, we had a great season. We ended up losing to Penn Hills in the Western Finals. Uh, they had like eight or nine Division One teams yeah, great team all over the place. place. Mm -hmm. uh, so we lost to them. Um, it, the score wasn't out of hand, but we were never in the game. They were just a better football team. They ended up winning the state championship. So uh, just a great experience there, a great run. They ended up going on to win, uh, go to two more Western Finals. Couldn't get to the state championship, but. Uh, two more Western Finals after 95, mm -hmm. uh, 96 and 97, I was in college, but a uh, tremendous run. I mean, to go to the Western Finals three years in a row is, is unheard of, and it was unprecedented at that time. Right, right. So what do you, when you hear Rudler, Coach Rudler's name in Kishon, what do you, what comes to mind with those guys? Um, just great coaches, great guys. I'm friends with them to this day. Um, they both had a passion for the game. Uh, ironically, they were both my coaches. Um, coach Cushon was my freshman baseball coach at Strong Vincent. Mm. Um, he was our defensive coordinator. Uh, he hired me in my first job in 1999 at McDowell. So I'm a young kid out of college and very fortunate I get to coach 6A at the time it was 4A. Uh -huh. Get to coach 4A football on a varsity football team and you know I, I, you think you know a lot. You don't know anything when you get out of college. You, know, you play and learn some positional stuff but that's where I started to learn the game was un under him. Fast forward years later, uh, Coach Ruler's actually on the staff when I'm the head coach, and Coach mm -hmm. Michonne coaches for a year in 2019 wow. when I was a head coach at McDowell. So very rewarding to see guys that coached you mm -hmm. come back and coach with you, and also former players. It's just uh, it's pretty special when you see that whole um, evolution of, of coaching and right, just a circle, playing, circle, and then those yeah, guys yeah, coming yeah, back and yeah, coach with you. Yeah. It's, those are some some great experiences for me and uh, pretty fortunate to have that. Right. So uh, I see you got the Penn State shirt on there. I know you, you played down there a little bit, right? I did. Um, I went down there and played football. Um, my college career wasn't very good. Um, I had a neck injury that ended my career. <clears throat> um, had an opportunity to be what would be like an undergrad assistant, a student assistant. Uh -huh. uh, I was still young and wanted to play sports. So um, I ended up playing baseball down there. Uh, for a couple of years, had Tommy John surgery, uh, never was the same after that. So, uh, not a real good college experience playing playing sports, and um, other than coming back and playing some family family first uh, basketball, that, that was kind of the end of it there. Right, right. Um, it was funny when I started coaching with Coach Cashon. I'm a young kid, 20, 22 years old, and um, my first couple of years, I just kept wanted to tell the guys like I still want to be out here. Mm -hmm. I had that passion. Yeah, you still game. want to play a little bit. Still want to play, and I'm trying to get that kind of embedded, instilled in those kids' head. Just get everything you got in every single practice and everything, mm -hmm. every single game, because someday you're not going to be able to, to do it anymore. And that's what got me into coaching was the love of the game. Right. I'm very passionate about coaching football. This is year 26 that I'll, I'll be doing it, so I just love it, and um, very thankful for, for, for Coach Cashone to get me in at such a young time. Right. So let's talk about how did you how did you first get into coaching? Where were you coaching at? Yeah, so my first job was um, senior year in college, right out of college uh, at McDowell. I coached there for six years. Um, we had some really good seasons there with Coach Cashone. He ran a, a great program, so I didn't just learn X's and O's from him, but learned some stuff about how to run a program. Mm -hmm. I had known him since I was a child. He was a family friend. A ton of respect for him. He resigned in 2004. I actually applied for the McDowell job. Um, I'm glad I didn't get it. I was too young. Uh, it wouldn't have been very good. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Don Hall, a friend of mine to this day, got the job at prep. And I learned a different side of, of the game with him. I coached with him from 05 to 08 uh, before he went back down to Pittsburgh. Right. He's still coaching down there at Gateway. And then uh, 2009 to 2013, I was with Mike Mishler. Uh, we won a state championship in 2012. And then um, McDowell job opened in uh, January of, of 2014. And I applied for that and, and able to get the head coaching job there at a school that I graduated from, which is pretty cool. Right. What did you learn under Mish and how, what was I like co coaching down as an assistant owner? You know what, every, uh, every different spot I had in coaching, whether it was um, under Coach Cashone or Don or, or Mike or 
they're all different experiences and they're all great experiences. You mm -hmm. know, you learn some different things from different guys. They're all different, um, even though everybody kind of has the same vision is to, right. to build a program. Mm -hmm. And obviously you want to have wins, but build relationships. So uh, all three were great experiences for me. I, I always say that um, I think the, the best coaches come from the guys that have coached under more guys and, and under you know, more experiences and right. see things done different ways. Mm -hmm. So you, you applied for the McDowell job. What, what year did you say that was? That was 2014. Okay, 2014 you applied. Um, you get they. How did you know you got the job? Did they call you and tell how, how did that happen? Well, I applied for it. There was three rounds of interviews. There was a lot of people that applied uh, that year. Um, end up getting to the third round. Um, and at the time, Bill Hall was superintendent and uh, there were a couple other guys in the final interview. Pretty much the final interview was, um, you know, just congratulations. You're going to be the head coach, and uh, obviously very excited. I was able to bring some guys over with me, um, not just coaching with me. They were going to bring some guys in the building, which is extremely important. Mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, coaching's not August to November, December. It's being with the kids all year round. Right. I think that's that's critical in building the program and our culture. So, so when you took the program over out there. What was like your biggest thing you, you like? This is what we need to do here to uh, f fulfill my, the vision of the district, my vision personally. What, what do you think that was? Yeah, no matter who was there before, Mark Sobolewski was there before and did a great job. But anybody that's coming in is going to want uh, your own your own culture. Um, our culture was one was going to start in the weight room. Um, it's it's where you know years maybe we weren't as talented. It's it's where we got us to either get close in games or win close games. Mm -hmm. uh, we got that cult culture going. I, I mean, I remember years ago at other schools where it's, it's tough in the off season to get kids there. These kids wanted to be in there more days than we were in there. We built that. It was somewhat established already, but we really built that culture there. Very fortunate that all of our a lot of our assistants would spend time in there. Mm -hmm. um, just seeing our coaches' faces made it, just showed them it's important. Um, more than just the X's and O's, which I'm very passionate about, I've called the offense for a long time. I love scheming against other coaches and defenses, but uh, I had a saying with our coaches that when you show your players that you care, and I've said this to a lot of people have already heard this, and you take an interest in their life outside of football, mm -hmm. they want to be coached, and you can coach them as hard as you want to. A lot of people say kids have changed these days, and you know, I see that, I see where they're coming from, but when you have the right, right relationship with the kids and they show you you care about them, they haven't changed. They want to be coached hard and they want to get better. And I think that's, you know, what we started to build with those kids. They, they bought into what we wanted. They bought into our philosophy, not just offensively and defensively, but how we wanted to get things done. And then we started to roll and start getting some win, wins. And obviously mm -hmm. um, that, that builds a little bit more uh, with them as well as, as far as buying into things and um, they, they got to the point where they didn't want to lose a game. Right. And with the schedule that we played over the years, that, that's tough. We had an undefeated season, a couple nine and ones, state playoffs, nine out of ten years. And, uh, you know, that, that culture and that standard has been set out there. Mm -hmm. So what are you most proud of uh, from your head coaching years? Oh, boy. Um, that's a tough question. Um, or some things you're proud of. Yeah. Um, I think I already alluded to it, just being able to build a program. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I got hired, um, the community wasn't at the games. There was, you'd see the pan, the, I'm sorry, the stands packed for the McDowell prep game. We got to the point where we had a, I had a great relationship with our boosters. Uh, our parents and our boosters over the years, tremendous relationship with them. Um, every game that we played the last six, seven years, the stands were packed. So. We built, um, we bridged a gap with our, our program and our alumni. Mm -hmm. We set up a Facebook page, tried to send them all the things that we were doing in our program, tried to um, build a connection with our community, and our Friday nights were awesome. I, there was a coach two years ago from Walsh Jesuit that said, um, you guys have the most hostile environment mm -hmm. that I've ever played at. And that's, that's the work of not just myself, but um, the girls who run our mob, our our principal, our athletes, very supportive athletic director, Mark Becker, our coaches, everybody in the community. I think that's one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the other thing that's really important, when I see our players go out to college and play football, they come back all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool when they come back and they say, Coach, I'd like to play one more year at McDowell. And they're going to play at various levels, right. Division One, Two, II, and Three. Uh, but they say they want to come back. I think that means 
um, we did something right and then we built something pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Any moments you wish you could have that? Any, any games or moments or anything like that you wish like, man, I wish we could do this, could do that? Or any moments when you look back at your career? Yeah, I mean, there's a few close games. Um, Western Finals of 2013, uh, ready to go to the state championship again. We lost, uh, we lost by six points, I think, in the last play of a game. A couple of close games. We had some battles with Austin Town Fitch, great story program from Ohio. I think we were four and three against them, but uh, game close against them. Uh, just some close games that maybe we could have pulled through, but uh, other than that, there's definitely not any regrets. Um, <clears throat> I definitely go in Saturday mornings and have some uh, play call regrets, <laughs> but, but no, re no regrets as far as coaching. Um, I know this, as you coach, you have to have the mindset that you want to get better. Mm -hmm. Every single off season, we tried to figure out how we get better, spent a lot of time on data analysis on what we did the year before. And mm -hmm. if it's not effective, then is it something we're doing? Is it scheme? And if you continue to not be effective, then you got to change something. So I, I always wanted to get better as a coach. I still do to this day. Everybody has room for growth. I know there's some people out there that just kind of do the same thing every year. And um, I don't think that's how you're successful as a coach or really anything in the business world or anything. So just the desire to get better and, and evaluate yourself is something I've taken pride in. Right. So, so right now, if, if all the kids that you coached over the last 26 years and the assistants that you work with, Hey, coach, they're all sitting in front of you right now. What would you say? <clears throat> well, um, I sat in this <clears throat> this room here back in January um, with ten other coaches, and they weren't expecting it. And we were having our normal January meeting to start planning for the year, except for we weren't planning for the year. Um, I was resigning, which was one of the most emotional times of my life. And the the first thing I told them was thank you. Um, so that's what I would say to all the guys that have coached me and guys that I've coached with, uh, you know, especially guys that coach uh, for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of time. I demanded a lot. Um, I tried to let the guys coach, but it's a lot of time and they didn't, they didn't make a whole lot of money, as right. you know, with your coaching oh, oh, experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like 10 cents an hour. So um, just a lot of fun, great experiences. And uh, anybody that I coach with or coach me is just, just thank you because it's a huge part of my life. What about the players? Same thing. Um, I tell them every year, well, you know, we have the banquet, but I always meet with the seniors at the end of the year. <clears throat> I tell them the same thing. Um, we demand a lot from you. There's a reason that we demand a lot from you, not just on the field. We we track their academics um, every single week. We're very involved in their lives, um, making sure that everything's going well outside of football, making sure they're staying out of trouble. You've, we've seen some great success stories. Um, I don't want to name any individuals, but some kids that maybe were in trouble early on right. in high school and went on to play Division One football and have successful careers, and that's very rewarding. But I always tell them just thank you for all the time you put in. Uh, we demand a lot. We get after you. But um, at the end of the day, when they, they say they have a great experience, that's what it's all about. Right. Can you give any advice to like a younger coach ever for right now, who's looking to take the path you did, become a head coach one day or just a coach? Give a little advice. Yeah, well, one, I'd be very upfront and say it's a lot of time. And, you know, I'm not a believer in playing a sport all year long at all. I think that's going on in youth sports, and I hate it. Mm -hmm. I like kids playing tons of things. I could go on about that forever, but I, I won't bore you, Mo. Um, it's going to be a lot of time, but if you're passionate about football, it's a, it's a way for you to get back into the game without playing because your bodies eventually can't do that. Um, you can't play in the NFL. There's a small percentage of guys that can do that. Uh, if you're passionate about it, get involved in it. Go coach with somebody, you're probably not going to make much, especially early on, uh, but go learn the game. And if you can coach under a couple different guys, be loyal, be loyal as can be, uh, be a sponge, um, you know, be as helpful as you can to the head coach because it's, it's crazy, but if you're passionate about it, go after it and do it because it's it's one of the better experiences of my life. Right. So now you're, you got back into coaching a little bit. What, Want to talk about that a little bit? What's going on now? <clears throat> yeah, so completely unexpected. I, I resigned sometime in January. I don't remember the date. Uh, my wife actually had a, uh, I hate calling it retirement because I'm still working, but resignation <laughs> party, if you will, <laughs> over at Otis 12. Um, some colleges reached out about coaching, and we talked about it before we get on camera here. Uh, going full-time to some of those schools just at my point in my career, 
um, just doesn't make sense with the family, with the money. Um, Allegheny had reached out and um, ironically the first thing he started talking about was you know, what we can pay you and I said I'm, I'm not worried about that, I'm not money hungry, let's just see if we can make this work logistically. It's a half hour down the road but I was worried about what time they practice. I don't want to show up and get on the field. I want to be involved in what they're doing right. and have an impact. Um, it worked. It worked out. I, I spoke with my wife. She was 100% uh, support, which she's been great over the years uh, since I met her. 100% support of what I do coaching. Um, so it worked out, and these guys have been awesome. Um, the head coach is 34. The offensive coordinator is 32. They were at Allegheny back in 2017 mm -hmm. when I spoke at their clinic. They went to Dayton and a couple other places and came back. Um, there, are, So I'm the old guy on staff. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the old fart on staff. Um, but they're awesome to work with. Um, it's been great so far. Went through all the spring ball. In the summer, I'm there a couple days a week because the kids are home in the mm -hmm. summer. Um, but we'll be back out on August 13th, full go with camp. So it's been really good so far. Um, and I'm looking forward to this fall in a, a different role. Great, great. Coach, anything else you want to share with the, with the audience with any, before we wrap up here? No, just uh, like, like I started this with, um, awesome what you're doing. Um, Mo's, for all you guys out there, he's doing this on his own time. He just walked into my house after work, so he's volunteering to do this, and it's awesome what you're doing, really. Uh, and I, I want to get to some of those weekend gatherings. Mm -hmm. We were in spring ball when you had those, so all my Saturdays were, were booked. Um, but no, just... Um, I love the game of football. Um, besides my family, it's my second passion in life. And through all the individuals that you've mentioned, guys that have coached me, guys that I coach with, guys that coach on staff with me, um, all the former players. I don't even know if it's hundreds or thousands over the years. <laughs> um, it's just it's been it's been great. Um, there's ups and downs in sports, and I think that's what makes you a better person. Right. Even after a win, sometimes you walk in the office and. You got stressed because somebody's hurt or something happened, but it's all worth it to me. That that's that's my passion is, is the game of football, and I don't know how many years I've left. I thought I was done. I'm at Allegheny now. Who you knows? Someday maybe I'll get back into high school football. But uh, for now, I'm doing what I'm doing. I love it. Right. Well, hey, everybody, this was uh, spent some time today with uh, Brad Orlando. Once again, he is the former head football coach at McDowell High School, now coaching at Allegheny College. Thanks, Coach, for your time. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Mo.